man, oh man, I live in a crazy world because I'm sitting here looking at uh, an analyst, a, a Japanese analyst that works for one of the largest e-shops or e-stores, I guess, that they have in all of Japan. They also technically have, have uh, an e-outlet here in the United States. I've actually used them, uh, Rakuten. One of their major analysts is out there predicting sales lifetime for PlayStation 5. Now, this is obviously a prediction analysts are working on right now as they work towards uh, giving uh, investment uh, portfolios and ideas of what companies should expect if they buy Sony stock right now and how PlayStation is going to affect that stock value. And right now, this analyst is projecting that there could be at least 200 million, if not 300 million, uh, PlayStation 5 sold. But really? They expect it to sell over 600 million units over the next five to six years. How the hell do you get to that? That is, what, three or four times what the what the PlayStation 2 did, the best-selling gaming platform, like, ever released, you know, in terms of, like, individual gaming platforms? Well, here's how they get to this mystical number. So... Originally, originally, uh, Mr. Yasoda Amaka, the chief analyst for Rakuten Securities Economic Research Institute, long mouthful to basically say that you know uh, the subsection of Rakuten he works for, predicts that the number of units sold worldwide will be 200 to 300 million in five, five to six years. Uh, and here is how he gets to those figures. Esports demands hardware that is fast and capable of advanced video processing, not only for professional gamers, but also for the amateur athletes and spectator fans. The high-spec, low-priced PS5 is for today's games. There is a possibility that it can become an international standard machine for esports instead of a personal computer. And then he goes on to say the data suggests that in the future, the number of PlayStation 5s could reach the order of 600 or 700 million a.k.a. four or five times the number of PlayStation 2s, which was the highest number ever for home video game consoles. Mr. Amanka said if the number of transfers from PlayStation 4, which is backwards compatible, is about 120 million, it's going to be a little bit less than 120, but that's okay. Uh, and if more than 100 million eSport competition population and then 400 million spectator population are added, in total, PlayStation 5 can be a market of more than 600 million. And to get a little context into it, it says, according to a 2020 global esports market report by Dutch research firm Nuzu, the world's esports competition population in 2019 is estimated to be around 100 million. This was last year. And the number of spectators is estimated to be at 443 million. The number of spectators increases by 12.3% compared to 2018, increasing by 11.7% in 2020 to 495 million, and increasing to 646 million, this in terms of spectators, in 2023 three years later in the year 2018 to 2023 a compound annual growth rate of 10.4 percent is projected for double digit growth the data suggests that in the future the number of playstation files we hit that 600 blah blah etc we already went over that so what the data obviously isn't taken in consideration is the crossover between spectators players and playstation 4 owners uh so Again, they're already projecting 200 plus million just based on 100 million esports players plus 120 million PlayStation 4 owners. But there's already going to be crossover in that audience, let alone crossover in the spectator audience. Either way, uh, either, let's say like you know they're being a little too bullish and it and it's closer to like 400 million. It's not going to happen. Let me explain why this analyst just doesn't get it. And this is coming from someone who I used to play Madden professionally. Granted, this was a long time ago, so the esports community has massively changed because I did play on console back then. Most of the esports community is ran on PCs. There's very few esports community that is not PC-based, and the ones that aren't are typically for games that are console exclusive as an example this one hits close to home with us guys the esports community for super smash Bros. ultimate is obviously not based on pc it's based on switch okay but those kind of things already exist so any like exclusive game that's only on a playstation 5 that has an esports community was already going to be using the playstation 5 anyways right to really make it big in the esports community you have to compete with the personal computer but in doing research on the esports community, and plus watching a lot of esports myself, we all know that the computers used at these competitions are sponsored, right? Typically, these computers are not owned by the competition committee. They're not owned by anyone running it. They are basically 
rentals that are out there by sponsors uh, in order to get their brand name in front of people that are watching. So that big audience of 400 plus million, uh, MSI or, or, or whatever, you know, you know, Intel, AMD, they all sponsor these events to get these products and get these, these computers in front of gamers, in front of uh, the competition, and in front of consumers. And the whole idea, of course, is to help increase uh, you know, purchases at home where people might consider buying, you know, the latest Intel processor, the latest AMD processor, the latest MSI or Asus motherboard or all this jazz or certain gaming peripherals. Now, peripherals are a little bit more um, different. There's a lot more options that, that are allowed for uh, esports peripherals as every single esports player will have their own preferred mouse and keyboard combination that they like to use. Uh, so that's a, a little bit more flexible. It's just kind of like, you know, some people have their own controllers they like to use. Uh, same thing in the esports community. Not everyone is standardized to the same keyboard and mouse. Typically, you're able to use your own as long as it's within a certain spec. There are obviously limitations uh, and stuff like that. But here's the thing. Here, here, here's what's interesting about this. The idea that this analyst thinks that PlayStation 5 can replace it because it's cheaper. Now, look, play, I'm not going to say there's no merit here. The PlayStation 5 is cheaper than a lot of at-home gaming PCs and more powerful than a lot of at-home gaming PCs, at least at the moment. Same is true of the Xbox Series X, by the way. Like, you know, why would it be Sony's platform over over Xboxes? Uh, that, that's one thing to consider. But beyond that... Consider this. Esports events are sponsored. In order for PlayStation 5 to become the de facto standard in the esports community, it would need to be sponsored. Sony would have to invest hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, sponsoring esports events to force the PlayStation 5 to be the de facto standard. In addition, in addition, it would need to ensure that the latency using mouse and keyboard on the system is fully customized for these events, for the games at the events. So like the League of Legends, which League of Legends is huge in the esports community. So imagine that you need to have your PlayStation 5 run, run League of Legends as well as a PC. You could still run it on monitors and all that jazz and get your high refresh rate, although you're limited to 120 FPS, which I know they don't talk about, but 120 FPS limit could be a concern at certain events where people like to have their games running at higher than 120 fps but that's neither here nor there that's obviously going to be up to the event coordinators and, and what the rules are and what the specs are searching but here's the number one issue with the thought process that playstation 5 can be an esports mastery and replace pcs which dominate the esports market and help prop up the uh the, the really the pc market in general the, the one reason the PC market is thriving as much as it is, especially with gamers, is because of the esports community. You know, we watch esports, we play we play these games, we play League of Legends, we play, you know, World of Warcraft, you know, there, there's online PvP championships and stuff for that. Like, we participate in this stuff. So why would PlayStation 5 replace PC? Because of the price. But the price has nothing to do with it, because these events don't pay for the machines anyways. They're sponsored. They're ad spots. They're, the hardware used at these events are ad spots. So think about this. Think about this. PlayStation 5 can't be upgraded beyond storage. Okay? In two years' time, the PlayStation 5 is going to be considered dated hardware. There's going to be newer processors, newer GPUs. Heck, we could argue the RDNA 2 GPUs coming out right now might be more powerful than the ones that are in. Heck, the, third, the 3000 series is probably more powerful than what's in a PlayStation 5. The, there's already processors more powerful than what's in a PlayStation 5. Why would the esports community nerf themselves and lock in to a hardware standard for the next five to six years that's going to be dated before it even comes out, if not dated definitely a year from now or two years from now? Why would gamers, professional gamers, tie themselves to set hardware where games cannot perform better? Because honestly, if you could get minimal latency, minimal MS at, you know, at pristine 4K and be pushing 120 plus FPS, that's going to give you a distinct advantage. There's a reason a lot of these esports players only play at 1080p because they want that super high refresh rate. But imagine that you can get a super high refresh rate that's well beyond your capability of seeing a dip, but you can also do it at higher resolutions. You're not going to pull that off on a PlayStation 5. 
It is absolutely ridiculous for this analyst to think, to even conceptualize, that PlayStation 5 could replace PCs in the esports world, and let alone that doing that would convert into 400 million people watching at home uh, picking up a PlayStation 5. I think the PlayStation 5 is going to sell incredible. I think it's going to be another 100 million plus unit seller for Sony. No reason to think otherwise. The only generation that Sony did not hit 100 million with their home console was PlayStation 3, and they launched that at a more expensive price than they're launching the PlayStation 5, and they did it with architecture that was more difficult to develop for at the time, regardless of it technically being more powerful than the Xbox 360. It was just hard to develop for. It was too different. And gaming didn't go down that way, even though the PlayStation 3 ended up being why we're still using Blu-rays to this day and why HD DVD didn't win the competition. It was largely thanks to the PlayStation 3. So when we look at the annals of gaming history and the annals of esports history, I'm sorry, analyst. Do you know what you're talking about? I get that these professional analysts are um, about trying to get people to invest. And if you if you take this analyst prediction to heart, I mean, you should be buying Sony stock like crazy right now. This guy, this guy's predicting a minimum of two hundred million and like a maximum of seven hundred million in in five to six years, four, five, six years. Um, one, Sony will not be able to make enough PlayStations in that time. Think about what I mean. The guy's basically predicting. Think about this logically. If it's going to sell, you know, 500, 600, 700 million in four, five, six years, it's going to be selling what? 100 million units a year? Sony won't even be able to manufacture 100 million units a year. <laughs> like, let's just be realistic. None of these companies have the capability of manufacturing 100 million consoles per year because it's an unrealistic, unattainable figure. It's not happening. Could it sell 25 million a year? Sure. And then you'd see, you know, in five years, what is that? You know, 125 million in unit sales. That's at least realistic. Heck, you want to you even say that it could potentially touch PC, PlayStation 2? Fine. Okay, fine. You, you predict that their market share is going to grow and they're going to be able to get up to, to the PlayStation 2 levels. Fine. That's, you know, even a pretty not safe like thing like saying it's going to sell 100 million i feel like is more of a safe analytical prediction but predicting 200 300 400 five, 700 million my word it's not replacing pcs a static cannot be upgraded system that isn't purpose built and designed uh, to maximize frame rates in esports games, maximize MS with peripherals that that involve mouse and keyboards, several different types of mice and keyboard, by the way, uh, some of which might even need drivers to properly run functionally. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. You are not, I repeat, not going to be replacing PCs in the esports community. There's a reason that PCs are still there because new hardware is available every single year and sponsors come in, and you better believe next year that NVIDIA is going to be sponsoring some of the esports tournaments to get their 3,000 series graphics cards in front of that 400 million people watching to convince those 400 million people they didn't need to buy you know, a 3,000 series graphics card. Same with AMD and their RDNA 2 stuff. Same with same with AMD and their processor. Same with Intel and their processor. Same with you know MSI and whoever else you know decides to sponsor these events. Like, seriously, I'm sorry. But this is one of the most asinine analytical predictions I've ever seen in my life. And this guy is paid for a living to make these kind of predictions. It's not happening. If you're looking to invest in Sony, in Sony stock, obviously you need to analyze more things than just, uh, the, the, than just their video game division, even though it is one of the biggest divisions they have, if not the biggest. Uh, movies is pretty big for them as well. Uh, and there's another Spider-Man movie coming, and they, they do get a cut of that, even though Marvel's making it. But here's the thing. The PlayStation 5 is going to be a success. It's going to be a 100 million seller. Guarant I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee that right now. It might even outsell the lifetime-to-date sales of the Nintendo Switch when it's all said and done. Even if Switch crosses 100 million, maybe PlayStation 5 even outsells that. I don't know. Maybe PlayStation 5 outsells PlayStation 4. I don't know. But it ain't touching 200 or 300 or 700 million. Let's be real. Esports community is going to stick with PC because it's what's best for the esports community. I put it this way you can run, as an example, you can run Fortnite extremely well on an Xbox One X. 
you can run it extremely well on an Xbox One X. You're not going to see professional players like Ninja quitting their PC anytime soon. You're just not because it's factually better on PC. This is reality. There is no reason to go to static hardware versus hardware that can be upgraded per tournament uh, when new stuff becomes available with new sponsors uh, that, that create uh, additional revenue streams for these places that get sponsored and obviously get uh, this hardware in front of more consumers. Sony could pull it off if they want to invest billions that they don't have. So Sony's not going to do that. I'm sorry. And this is, this is presuming that AMD and NVIDIA, by the way, AMD makes the hardware inside PlayStation 5. So AMD has, has sponsored some uh, some tournaments in the past, some of these esports tournaments. Do you think AMD that makes the hardware inside the PlayStation 5 is going to be cool with Sony encroaching on their territory? Lots of things working against this prediction. So, yeah, I'm sorry. This analyst is just needs to stick with something else that he's more knowledgeable in because I don't think he knows jack squat about the esports community, how how it works, and why this is an asinine prediction. All right, folks, I am Nintendo RoboJams from Nintendo Prime. Again, PlayStation 5 looks great. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I like the UI. I talked about that recently. Um, I'm, I'm excited to play Demon's Souls, uh, Miles, Miles Morales as well on the PlayStation 5 versus that PlayStation 4 version. I'm excited. I'm excited for next gen. I can't wait for November to get here. But... 700 million. Yikes. Catch you guys in the next video.